I appreciate y'all coming here. Uh, each each uh, of you know the challenge that we have in our state uh, with our budget, and so today I've dropped Senate Bill 485, uh, which is a proposal that will reduce the number of judge superior court judgeships in the state of Georgia. Uh, I want to say that up front, I want that everybody to understand that I'm a, an accountant by trade, and I have uh, chaired the best value in government task force, and so we look for efficiencies in state government. And one of the areas where we've looked uh, in this uh, is to deal with the Superior Court judgeships. What it will do is it will save, as we estimate, 13 to $14 million, and it will reduce the number of judgeships from the current level of 205 to 186. Um, this is one of the very few things that we've come up over the last two weeks uh, in the time that we took off the budget that requires legislative action. And we only have seven days left, so that's the reason that I'm dropping the bill and, and moving rather quickly on that at, at this point in time. Um, the majority of the cuts that we will have in the budget uh, it will be done through the budget process. As I said, this needs statutory, uh, statutory action for us to take. Uh, if you will give me a chance, I want to try to walk you through the rationale on what we did on this. I want everybody to understand that this is nothing personal. But as we've gone through the budget cycle and we evaluated in different departments where we've had to eliminate programs, and potentially looking at the elimination of jobs. Um, so I've looked at the, and I believe you all have in the packet, did they have some information? I, I have they have it, if we could get, can you hand that out to them? So we can walk through this and the rationale that I did. What we did is we took all of the circuits um, that we have right now, there's 49 circuits, and we looked at the average cases filed per judge in the state. And if you look towards the bottom and you can look in the middle column where it says average per judge, You'll notice that the range goes from 3,878 cases per judge in Alcove all the way to only 1,269 in Eastern. And uh, if you'll notice, Eastern even has more uh, judges than Alcove does. And so on the average basis, Alcove is doing about three times the amount of work. And so when, you, when we're looking at this, I started from the bottom in trying to uh, eliminate judgeships so that they, uh, to, to bring the averages up. You'll notice that I skipped a few circuits there that have only two, just, two judges. We felt like that that was not the right thing to do is to just go down to one judge. So we, we skipped those that only had uh, two judges. So this is the, the rationale that, that I came up with in making this proposal. Uh, as we speak, we are trying to communicate with each, each one of these circuits so they, are under, they understand what it is we're trying to do. And in the typical way that I try to do things, I'm asking for their input in how we do this uh, in the most um, efficient and effective way. We do not want uh, major interruptions in our court systems, um, but I really believe that there's some efficiencies that can be uh, gained in doing this. We, um, in, in, in looking at the fact that we're trying to fill a $1.1 billion hole, I think it's extremely important that, um, that we look at any alternatives and we talk about efficiencies. I believe that even the superior court system uh, should be a part of uh, the team in looking for these efficiencies. If you look at our budget numbers, uh, the General Assembly has taken an 8% cut in, in since FY09 in trying to gain efficiencies. The Court of Appeals has taken a 10.9% cut uh, in trying to, uh, to help be part of the team and meet the budget challenge that we have. The Supreme Court has 10.1% has cut that they've taken. However, the superior courts have, are to date are only 2.8%. Uh, I believe that that's, that's not carrying the weight when we see a lot of other agencies that are going from uh, anywhere from 8 to 60% cuts as we're trying to deal with our budget cycle in this. Um, this is an initial proposal. The actual bill, all it does is shows the circuits that you have highlighted here in yellow that would be reduced by one judge except for the Atlanta circuit. The Atlanta circuit, uh, I've, I've, I'm making a suggestion of four judges. And you'll see that in the right-hand column of what we've given you, you'll see what the average caseload would be spread out amongst the remaining judges. And in that, you will still see sig a significant amount of circuits that are still below average after uh, making these, these reductions. Their, their caseload will still be below average. Um, and the Atlanta circuit is one of those as I said, we're reducing by four uh, judges. Even with that, they still will be below average. Um, so with that, uh, I will see if, if y'all have any questions and see what I can do. As I, um, uh, our budget levels right now, we're looking 
our, our, our revenue levels are about a 2004, 2005 um, uh, cycle. And so this would get us very near in the area of where our, the number of judgeships that we had in 2004, 2005. So it matches up with the rationale of many other things that we're doing. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, I noticed a, cu a couple of these you've actually um, proposed adding a judge. Um, and I guess that's per their caseload. Uh, Alcovey and Brunswick uh, jump out at me. Um, uh, I apologize. That was that was that was an error. That that I don't know how that how that happened in trying to put this together. Um, no, we're we're not adding judges I anywhere. Like, wait, we get I, Brunswick, I apologize example, for that. Um, a, a legislation was passed last year uh, that would add a judge, and it's been introduced again. So, are you considering that judge? The judge hasn't been appointed until the next fiscal year. I, Walter, I, I don't want to misspeak, but I think you're referring to that they're, we're talking about extending the appointment of that, that judge at this time. We, um, yeah, it's a judge that was it's added, a judge that was added, added but they haven't started. filled it yet. Yeah. So I think the legislation that's coming through the House is just extending the time for the appointment on that. So that is, in effect, delaying the actual establishment of a judge in that, in that circuit because we don't have the money. Where did you get the caseload data? Um, somebody, I asked uh, somebody in research to pick up that information for me. I can get back for you exactly if you want to know the source. Does it you make sure that I get the exact source on that. I, I, it was one of those staff things. I asked somebody to go get the information for me, and this is what they got. The source on the caseloads? The source on the caseloads. But it doesn't distinguish between if you have murder trials like you would have maybe in Atlanta or then in another circuit. The reason why I kind of pointed out in Atlanta is that we, it, your assumption is there's more murder trials in Atlanta. Even with reduction of four ju judges, you'll look at their caseload is still significantly below average of all of the circuits. And so there's many other circuits that, that have the same type of thing they're dealing with, but the Atlanta circuit will still be well below average of all the other circuits. Senator, just a quick clarification first. You keep saying that there's going to be a four-judge reduction in Atlanta. On, on the sheet, if I'm reading it right, it shows three. That is one where they just got a new judge and it has been, it was funded, so the net effect on the Atlanta would be three. Besides the murder chart, um, trials, petty crime, foreclosures, uh, repossession trials go up during the, the back. Felony cases would be in Superior Court. Um, what, what concern are you, what, what concern do you have about the caseload? Um, do you have any concerns about the caseloads of some of these? Absolutely. As I, as I said, um, I am making an invitation to every one of these circuits to sit down and talk so I fully understand, um, number one, maybe why their caseload is so low and why they think that they shouldn't have a judge uh, reduce the impact that it would make because I am very concerned about um, the, the um, public safety and the process to the courts. Um, but again, we're at a position right now where we can only afford so much uh, at this, uh, in our state and there are many critical needs that we have in this state and this is an area where I'm making a proposal for us to really look at this uh, and see if it makes sense for us to reduce some judgeships. So I'm, I've made an invitation to every one of those, um, those circuits to sit down with them so that we can have a discussion about the best way of going about doing this. Do you know enough layoffs are going to be involved, maybe retiring? Or? Well, the, 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 the challenge is that the Constitution we are not, we do not have the authority to, to lay them off. We do not have the authority to reduce their salaries, but we do have the authority to remove judgeships. And so according to the Constitution, that's the only power by which we have. And so this is the direction that we're taking.